Yes. So, welcome to the inaugural ride of Ripta's new um, electric bus. Um, as many of you know, we have three of them on our campus. Two of them are taking the tour this morning. We are thrilled, Governor, to have you with us and our congressional delegation, Mayor Lawser, and um, I saw Senator Diaz, uh, Representative Diaz, sorry. Um, Senator Casana. Oh, she's right behind me, I'm sorry. And Director <laughs> Alvini, uh, Mayor Alorza, we are thrilled to have you all here. We are one of the first um, states in the nation to deploy um, Volkswagen settlement funds in this manner, and um, we are thrilled um, to be able to uh, show you our new buses today. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to um, the Director of the Department of Environmental Management, Janet Ford. Hey. Hey. Well, this is a really exciting day, and I am thrilled to be here with the delegation, the mayor, our legislators, uh, my colleagues. Uh, yeah, I think we are the first in the nation to put these $14.4 million of federal settlement money that we got from the VW settlement into action. And right from the start, the governor said, lead by example. And we thought that using the funds, the, the vast bulk of the funds, to go into taking the oldest, dirtiest buses off the road and replacing them with zero emission buses was the right thing to do. And we've done it in record time. I don't want to steal anyone else's thunder, so I just want to make two quick points. One, this is about cleaner air. This is reducing emissions of nitrogen oxides that both cause smog locally and that contribute to climate change. Um, and it's particularly having an impact around this bus route. And then, lastly, I just can't miss an opportunity to tell everyone to vote yes on questionary. <laughs> the green economy, clean water bond, which is part of having a healthier Rhode Island is good for our business and it's good for the health of our communities. And I will leave it at that except to, to, to end by saying this has been a tremendous team effort. I can't say enough about Ripta, um, Scott Evadesian, Amy Patin, uh, my colleagues at the Office of Energy Resources, the DPUC, um, the, the Health Department, and then my incredible staff at DEM. We are the lead agency on making sure that the VW settlement funds uh, do what they're supposed to do which was, is, you know, address a gross violation by using the money to make our air cleaner. Uh, so, this is so exciting, and I think these buses are sleek and beautiful, and just really proud of Rhode Island. Hey, where? Warren, In Rhode Warren, Rhode Island. Island. <laughs> so, I'd like to turn it over to uh, my boss, Governor Raimondo, who right from the very, very start just said, put this money to use and endorse this plan to replace the Ripta buses. So, thank you, Governor. Thank you, Janet. Yeah. <laughs> I can even reach. <laughs> Often I can. Uh, okay, so thank you everybody. Thank you guys, members of the media, for going along with this somewhat unorthodox uh, <laughs> venue. But we thought what better way to let you see Rhode Island um, taking action on climate change than to ride the bus. Um, it sounds wonderful. You know, it sounds wonderful, it, it feels wonderful. I want to thank Scott and Amy at RIPTA, Janet, who's amazing, um, our entire congressional delegation. This is all because of a federal settlement with uh, VW. Um, Mayor Lorza, thank you, and Anna and Grace, thank you guys. Director Alvidi, you know, this is exciting. This is exciting. We are committed to meeting the challenges of climate change. We're doing an awful lot with solar and wind, but transportation matters. You know, that we have to continue to get serious about uh, limiting emissions from transportation. And as Janet said, air quality uh, is vital. So these, the, these are, what we're doing is this is a pilot. So we have three buses of this kind, three electric buses. This is a, as a pilot, this is the, made voyage of one <laughs> and our goal is to have one third of the Ripta fleet to be electric by 2021 and I am totally confident with that with this team we'll make it happen and as Janet said the, the Ripta buses now they are old they are pollution machines and if in the next few years we can replace a third of them with beautiful buses like this that are totally electric, that'll be fantastic for our environment. And as Senator Whitehouse said, 
they are made and designed in Warren, Rhode Island. So what's not to love about this project? And I'm so proud of all of you who made it happen. So thank you. Well, thanks. It's great to be here. All my colleagues in government, uh, welcome. I want to uh, pick up on the governor's point. Uh, this is not only a great electric vehicle, but it was made in Rhode Island TPI. So let me give a shout out to uh, the gang at TPI. Brian, 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 Nelson Rodriguez, Herman Godero, and Leo Andre, thank you. And also Proterra provided the, the uh, our uh, Steve O'Neill from Proterra, they provided the horsepower, if you will. And I say that because, as I was talking before, my grandfather, James J. Monahan, worked on the trolleys back about 100 plus years ago. So I've got a lot of Ripter in my blood. It was called something else back then. But we've come a long way from horses uh, to electricity, and that's a good progress. And let me a shout out to Tom Q too, and all the people that work at at RIFTA that make this system work so well. The other thing that's helped this program is the low emissions grant, 1.5 million dollars from the federal government. And over the past several years, working with Cheryl and Jim and Dave, we provided several million dollars a year for acquisition of buses. Now we hope it's going to be used for acquisition of electric buses made in Warren, Rhode Island. Thank you. So delighted to be with all of you. It is a uh, big congratulations to uh, Scott and Ripta and his team, Amy, and, and everybody who's uh, made this possible, to the governor and the, the uh, DEM for putting the money to this wonderful, wonderful use. A um, hundred jobs in Warren, Rhode Island, build the shell and the chassis of this beautiful, beautiful vehicle, which then goes out to LA for assembly and powering, and now it's back here. It is going to hit at the most polluting sector we still have right now, the transportation sector. And this is not just global warming, this is like neighborhoods in Providence with cleaner air, because there's less exhaust, and the way we get there is by building stuff in Rhode Island with 100 jobs so far. And I expect, Brian, more to come as demand ramps up for this, right? You're looking at more. So this is a very, very exciting day, and I want to recognize all my fellow officials and thank everybody for being a, a part of this. It's very cool stuff. And uh, Carol Grant from our energy office deserves a little bit of a shout out back there, too, for all of her great work. So, Mayor, congratulations on your new buses. Love it. <laughs> Sir James? So we have been meandering through um, one of the neighborhoods that was really um, focused on in this grant application. The notion was to go to um, areas where we saw high cases of asthma and, um, and other illnesses that um, obviously dirty buses um, contribute to. Um, so it's no mistake of the, the route that we're traveling today in order to make that work. But it's also um, interesting, I had to make sure which congressional district we are in now as we uh, move in. Um, and I'd like to turn it over to Congressman Slater. Oh. He goes first, he's senior. I don't mind David. He used to be too, so. Yeah, yeah. I'll be fast. So, uh, it's great to be here. First, I want to uh, thank the governor for her leadership, thank Janet, and of course, Carol Grant. Um, for quickly putting these resources to work, and it's wonderful to be with my colleagues, Representative Diaz and Senator Casada, and of course uh, my colleagues in the delegation and the mayor. And uh, you know, this is exciting because it not only is going to improve the quality of the transportation, but we're going to improve the, the, the health and well-being of residents of this neighborhood. As the as Mayor Abedijan just mentioned, this is an area where there's a very high level of asthma because of the quality of the air. It's particularly important that we remember this is in response, these resources are in response to a company that lied to the American people about carbon emissions and endanger the lives of people by misreporting those. So this is a perfect response to it by improving the quality of air here. I want to compliment the government. This happened fast. States labor over this money. You put it to work immediately to benefit the residents of our state. Congratulations, and we're happy to be part of it and to be here tonight. And by the way, don't make this your last time riding the bus. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Uh, first of all, uh, 
you know, we often talk about Rhode Island is on the move, especially under Governor Spider's leadership. Well, <laughs> this is where he puts it. So I, I am I'm thrilled to be uh, one of the first to ride this uh, new uh, zero emission bus. This is really exciting. It's the future, and it really symbolizes Rhode Island in a lot of ways in the direction that that we're moving in. And uh, uh, you know, th there's a lot of buzz right now around electric cars and and uh, and now electric buses and uh, zero emissions. I'd be remiss if I didn't point out that I've been using an alternative fuel vehicle to get out for, <laughs> for, for long before it was uh, popular. It's uh, now everybody's going to get the benefit of zero emissions uh, uh, vehicles and, uh, and buses in particular like this. And I'm just so thrilled that it's actually coming here to Rhode Island. We have to do more as a as a country to reduce our carbon emissions. If we want to be good stewards of this planet and leave our planet better off uh, tomorrow than we're leaving it today, we have got to do exactly this, what we're doing here. And this is hopefully one of many projects. I commend Governor Mundo. I want to commend, obviously, Ripta and Scott Abadesia and, and uh, Director Coit and, and Director Alvidi for their support. Uh, let's not forget about the, uh, uh, the, the the people that would drive these buses day in and day out. So Tommy Q and, and the members of the Bus this Thank you for the work that you do, and uh, let's uh, continue to see this kind of progress being made in Rhode Island. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. Um, as we said, it's a little unorthodox to have a mobile um, press conference. Um, in your press packets, and for anyone who doesn't have one, let us know. There are a number of fact sheets. We worked hard with the governor's office and with um, the Department of Environmental Management, the Department of Health. Um, the Office of Energy Resources, the DPUC, to make sure that all of the state partners all told their piece of this story, and it's all in your press packet, but if you didn't get one, we'll make sure we get that information to you. Um, and all of the speakers will be available when we get back to um, the bus barn for questions and what, um, whatever. So uh, with that, I'm going to ask Mayor Lorza if he would like to make a few comments. Well, thank you, Scott. Uh, I want to begin by saying congratulations to the governor. Thank you for inspiring us to be bolder and to push harder on uh, issues of sustainability and climate change. You know, this is a very, very cool way, in a very uh, concrete, very public way, uh, to show our state's commitment to this. You have an amazing team, Governor, Janet, uh, Peter, uh, well, Scott, I guess, uh, and, and Ripta. Uh, Carol is amazing as well. Um, and uh, you know, I want you to know that on the city side, now we have a goal to get to carbon net neutrality by 2050 as a city. And the two main causes of uh, carbon, emission, carbon emissions are our buildings and our cars. And so while we continue to do work around uh, our buildings, you know, this is an important reminder that you know, we can take small, important, and large steps and to uh, curb carbon emissions. And this is a great compliment for our city too. You know, we recently inaugurated the jump bicycles. We have the scooters throughout the city as well. People are looking for different mobility options. This is one, and it's all ways that they can uh, do that without adding to the, the city and state's carbon footprint. So this is tremendously important. Thank you to you. Thank you to the entire congressional delegation, to your team, Rep. Casada, uh, Senator Casada, Rep. Diaz. I also want to give a shout out. Uh, we have the president of the NAACP, you know, Jim Vincent here. So I know you're here wearing a couple of different hats. Uh, but as Congressman Cicilline mentioned, you know, this is also about equity. You know, we're riding through the neighborhoods that have the largest asthma rates in the state. And so whatever we can do to curb those uh, carbon emissions, they go a very, very long way. So thank you, everyone. Oh. And Amy Patin is amazing. Yeah. 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 Amy has had a number of sleepless nights, please, Lily. <laughs> Uh, uh, she's on the other bus. She's, the other bus. <laughs> she's hiding. Lily's Lin been awake since about 2 a.m. to make sure that everything worked out today. As I said, there will be plenty of time for questions when we get back into the yard. Um, just a couple of quick thank yous to the staff at Ripta. I can tell you that Amy and Lily have um, lived this project for months now um, and have been uh, through every iteration of what could happen, when it could happen, how it could happen, and whether or not it would happen. Um, but I do want to also say, Joe Monty's up front. Joe does all yes. of our bus specs. Um, this is a whole new venture yes, for us. Joe. And 
you know, one of my favorite um, professors said that you do never exercise any leadership unless you took off your own people at a rate that they can absorb. Um, so this has ticked off a lot of people. Um, and a lot of people have had to learn to grow and to move with this process. And Tommy Q in the ATU, you know, whenever you talk about a new change, it brings up lots of manpower issues that we need to discuss. And the ATU has been willing to be at the table to have discussions about how we continue to improve and how we continue um, to grow and, and to mature in, in this industry. Um, and then thanks, Governor. Um, this wouldn't have happened if your office hadn't been pushing us to go do things in a do new and different way. Um, and we really appreciate all your support. Yeah, great work. Scott, could we ask maybe Eric and Brian to sure. say a few words? Um, Eric was talking about Yep, and just about the buses. Sure. Uh, my name is Eric McCarthy. I'm with a company called Proterra, and we manufacture these buses. Our mission is to provide clean, quiet transportation for all. And it, it is my sincere thanks, and, and it's a privilege to be here with all of you on your green journey. The buses are quiet. As you can see, we're having a conversation on a city bus, right? That does not happen on a heavy duty bus powered by an internal combustion engine. They're clean, we have no tailpipe, there are no emissions, uh, and providing transportation in disadvantaged communities, that is so close to, to our mission. And so, thank you, we are so glad to be a part of this journey, uh, and uh, we hope that we see many more buses here in Providence. Thank you. Thanks. Right. Uh, I didn't prepare a speech, so I'll try this one out. Uh, <laughs> So Tillotson Pearson's been in War Rhode Island since 1968, so this year is our 50th anniversary, and it's really neat to see you know, a structure this large being used in a public transportation setting such as this, uh, where the world's, uh, the world's leading producer of, or independent producer of wind blades. Uh, and uh, it's really neat now to see the connection between energy being uh, created using renewable power, and now we're saving energy using it in another form. So thank you very much, guys. Thank you, Ripter. Uh, for purchasing the three vehicles here and look forward to uh, keeping the job in Rhode Island and, and keeping it going. So thank, thank you, DPI. Hi, I'm Tom Cuda, President and Business Manager for 18618, which represents the employees at RIPTA. And again, I, uh, I think we are so fortunate in the state of Rhode Island to have the leadership of uh, congressional delegation led by Governor Raimondo. Uh, that have worked so hard to make sure that we are competitive, not only in the economic and jobs industry, but also in technologies that are new and are good for the environment. Transit jobs are clean jobs, and I'd like to recognize the operator today, Terry Hollis. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Terry. Very, gave us a great smooth ride, but on behalf of all the members of uh, my local union and employees here, that uh, work for RIPTA, we are very appreciative of all the support we've had uh, from uh, this project, and we look forward to a good, long partnership. And thank you again to the CEO for including us in that.